Uh, okay, let me share my screen. Guys, can you please confirm, can you see my screen and can you hear me well? Okay, good. <clears throat> so VPC, what is the full form of VPC? Virtual Private Cloud. So we have been talking about the VPC. We have been using the VPC since day one, right? We are talking about the VPCs. So everything, whatever the infrastructure that we created in AWS, everything should be within the VPC. Did we create anything outside VPC? No. So everything should be inside the VPC if you want to secure it. So till now, we have used default VPC. Yes or no? So till now, anywhere, everywhere you take EC2, RDS, EF, anywhere you take a service, we use the default VPCs. So from now onwards, enough. Ika, salu, right? So enough. We should not use the default VPCs anymore. So, or we should not use default things anymore. We will not use default VPC. We will not use default security group. We will not be using nothing defaults. Right. So everything what we create is freshly and we'll create as per the real time thing. OK, so can we say VPC is like a virtual data center on the cloud? It's like a virtual data center. Only, right? Everything we create is inside the VPC. So what we're going to do is and why VPC is regional or global. VPC is regional. How many VPCs you can create in one region? Maximum VPCs. Yes, maximum VPCs per region is five. We have learned this already, right? So we already have a default VPC provided by AWS. Yes, we have already a default VPC provided by AWS. So guys, you have to listen this carefully because I will make this VPC very simple. If you concentrate, it will be very simple. So if you put your mind somewhere, it's very hard. I'm telling you, I'm telling you before itself. So, and you should be very interactive in this session because based on the interaction only or interactive only, you will understand more. Okay. So what I will, be, what I'll be doing is in order to make you register in your brain, directly injecting for this, I'll show you one diagram. I'll put one diagram here. Just tell me what are the things that you can see in the diagram. Okay. Think as an architect perspective okay now we have this <laughs> okay see this diagram and tell me what are the things that you can see in the diagram come as a order don't select random things come with order Online people put it in the chat. Hmm? Hmm. 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 Bolo. Okay. So first you have the AWS, inside this you have the region, inside the region you have, we have VPC, inside the VPC you have availability zone, inside the available zones you have subnets. How many types of subnets are there? Two types, what are those? Public subnet and private subnet, fantastic, very good. So you see public subnet, private subnet, do you see internet gateway? Uh, why didn't you told that? Kallu. <laughs> okay. So this is a internet gateway. And what is this? NAT gateway. Right? So internet gateway, NAT gateway, we have seen. And then we see here router. And then route tables. So these are the few things that we have. Let us go one by one. What is this architecture for? Okay. So the first thing that we talk about is VPC. Guys, this order is very important. First is 
VPC, and then we'll talk about Internet Gateway. What is that? So let's talk about what is Internet Gateway. Okay, Internet Gateway. After that, I call public and private subnets, and then I call it as next is NAT Gateway. Next is router with uh, routing tables. Now tell me with me, guys, what is the first thing? VPC. What is the next? Internet gateway. Third, public and private subnets. Fourth, NAT gateway. Fifth, routing tables. Again, number one. Which one? One, VPC. Next, internet gateway. Next, public and private subnets. Next, NAT gateway. Next, routing tables. So this one you should keep this in mind. First of all, let's go one by one. VPC. Anyways, the entire concept is about VPC. We'll be talking about the VPC. Next thing here is Internet Gateway. Chitte, till now we launch EC2 instances many times, and from the EC2 instances, do we have internet access? Yes or no? We have internet access, correct? Otherwise, how do you download all the packages, correct? So we have internet access from the EC2 instance. So whenever you log into AWS or EC2 instances, they have the internet access. Who is the guy who is providing internet access to your VPC? Internet Gateway. Which one? Internet Gateway. So if anyone asks you what is Internet Gateway, then you should say Internet Gateway is used to provide internet to the VPC. So what is the job of Internet Gateway? To provide the internet to the VPC. So first thing is we create a VPC and then we create Internet Gateway. We create Internet Gateway and what we do is we will attach it to the VPC. You create internet gateway, it will be just lying over there. You should attach it now to which VPC, then only you'll get internet access. So what is the first thing? Create a VPC. Next thing, create internet gateway and uh, attach to the VPC. Online guys, I want you to write it. Create internet gateway and uh, attach to the VPC. So first I'll write it here. Internet gateway. Can I call it as IGW in shortcut? So IGW, what does it do? It provides internet to the VPC. It provides internet to the VPC. So what is the next thing? Okay, that is good. So after internet gateway, what we are talking, what we need to talk about? Subnets. How many types of subnets are there? Two types of subnets. One is public subnet, another one is private subnet. No, no, public subnet meaning, can I say, which is exposed to the internet? So remember, in VPC, Yeah, of course. Guys, that's why I took confirmation. Now, can you see my screen, guys, others? Uh, everyone is able to see. Please check. What happened to your 1.5 GB, Pawan Veer? Huh? Yeah, let me yeah, rejoin it. Okay. Okay. So, guys, so now we have how many types of subnets are there? Two types. What are those, Nana? Public subnet and then? private subnet. So private public subnet meaning which is exposed to the internet. So let's say for example, whenever you want to launch an EC2 instance, that EC2 instance can be public, can be private. Yes or no? If you assign, if I assign public IP, it will be exposed to the internet. So that meaning any from anyone from outside can directly connect to your uh, public subnet EC2 instances? Answer is yes. How about this private subnet? Private subnet is exposed to the internet? No. Can you connect from internet to your private subnet? No. Can you from internet, can you connect directly to your private subnet? To which subnet you can connect? Uh, only public subnet. So now I'll write here public subnet. So what is public subnet? Can I say which is exposed to? Which is exposed to the internet okay and how about private subnet huh? which is not exposed to internet that is private 
So it is up to us, correct, whether we can expose. So you can decide, no, there are few citizens that can be exposed. There are few citizens that cannot be exposed to the internet. Getting it slowly? Okay. So now, very important catch. Please see here. Please see here. You can write later. Please here. So let's talk about public subnet. So public subnet traffic, the traffic in the public subnet. What do we have in the public subnet? EC2 instance, no. So whatever the traffic that is sending from the EC2 instance, all the traffic is exposed to the internet? Yes. So that meaning the traffic is routed to which thing in our architecture? Internet gateway, because all your public subnet traffic is routed to internet gateway. Guys, see here. So this is the public subnet. This is the public subnet and this is the private subnet. So whatever you put inside the public subnet, all the traffic is routed to internet gateway because it is exposed to the internet. Now, who is the guy who is giving internet to your uh, VPC? Internet gateway. So all public traffic, guys, all public subnet traffic is routed to, uh, again, which one? Internet gateway. Public subnet traffic is routed to internet gateway. Guys, online, please say with me, guys, please put in the chat. So public subnet. So public subnet is public subnet traffic is routed to internet gateway. Very good. Because internet gateway is the one who is giving the internet access. That's why all the traffic in the public subnet is routed to the internet gateway. Then what is the another subnet we have? Private subnet. So guys, in private subnet also, we should have internet access. Definitely we need to have internet access. No, for your private subnet also, there might be few EC2 instances which need internet access. But can you tell me your private subnet traffic will be routed to internet gateway? not good what what will happen if you if you so if you route your private subnet traffic to the internet gateway this will become public subnet or private subnet public subnet so will you route it to the internet gateway no so now this public sub this private subnet how does it get internet access that is through nat gateway that is through what nat gateway so guys private subnet traffic is routed to everyone private subnet traffic is routed to public subnet traffic is routed to private subnet routing is routed to to catch very important thing so i'll write it here so private subnet traffic is routed to NAT gateway. NAT gateway. Okay. So by the way, first of all, we need to know what is NAT gateway, right? What is the full form of NAT? Uh, the full form of NAT is network address translator. What is that? Network address translator so what does he do what does he do no see here guys see here this is what subnet is this private subnet so let's say for example from this you are sending some traffic so it will go to which gateway from private subnet the traffic is routed to nat so it will go to the nat so let's say for example this is the ip address 10.0.1.5 from here the traffic is routing to the nat it will go to the nat and what does NAT you, it do? No, NAT will convert this private IP to public IP. It will mask. NAT will convert the public IP to, sorry, private IP to public IP. So this, this is masked here in this. With that public IP, it will send it to the internet gateway outside. So the job of the NAT is only to give internet access to your, which subnet? private subnet and the job of the NAT gateway is to convert private IP to public IP. So let's say any hacker comes here with the public IP. He'll come here, he'll come here and he'll come here, he'll sit here. 
here the ip is masked no can he go able to go here no way he will not go so that's how we secure it you understood what is nat gateway nana okay another question your nat gateway should be in public subnet or private subnet hmm uh, think logically and tell public or private so let's say if you put it in private your nat gateway if you put in private 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 do you have internet access if you are sending it to internet gateway that will become public uh, subnet so private private no internet access so if nat gateway need to have internet access no for that reason you are putting in the public subnet so nat gateway will be sending it to the internet gateway and all your private subnet traffic is routed to nat and from nat to internet gateway so very important nat gateway should be present in which subnet public subnet you are understood super so now what is the job of the nat nat is used to provide internet to which subnet ah to private subnet and what does the nat do nat will convert convert private ip to public ip oh. is it clear and nat gateway should be in which subnet ah uh, nat gateway should be in public subnet is it clear till here everyone everyone clear no city online clear nice so now we discuss about we are talking about vpc and we discuss about internet gateway we discuss about public subnet private subnet and we discuss about nat and what is the next thing routing table so guys here we have something called a router guys good thing here is in uh, in aws we no need to set up any router like cisco routers no networking hard concepts here so router is inbuilt so what you need to create is only routing tables you need to create what you need to create routing tables and how many types of routing tables are there two types what are those public routing table private routing table which one public routing table private routing table see me see me guys everyone online here so how many types of routing tables are there two types what are those public routing table private routing table listen my question and answer correctly <clears throat> in private in public routing table which one in public routing table all the traffic is routed to internet gateway which one nana internet gateway very good again i'm asking in public routing table all the traffic is routed to internet gateway and which subnet is associated to public routing table which subnet public subnet which subnet public subnet so two things here again i'm asking everyone public routing table all the traffic is routed to internet gateway and which subnet is associated public subnet is associated next question and another routing table is what private routing private routing table traffic is routed to nat gateway and which subnet is associated private subnet is associated which subnet is associated for private routing table private public public private private super so how many types of routing tables are there two types so one is public routing table public rt rt refers routing table so here i'll write all traffic is routed to ha huh, internet gateway routed in bit subnet is associated public subnet is associated very nice similarly we have which subnet which routing table private routing table and all traffic is routed to nat and which subnet private subnet is associated did you understood here till here if you understood till here that is the core concept of vpc if you understood till here aaram se vpc is jujube 
really it's not fun so because when we do the practicals after after i do the practicals today you'll repeat it tomorrow no you'll come to me sir it is very simple no sir why people say that it's very hard because the order is important because i was also the person when in a starting days when i was setting up my infrastructure for my company what is the first thing that we should do vpc only no so there i was struggling what is this public segment what is private what is nat what should i create first so guys this order is important so then at that time i wrote it in book at that time i wrote it in book what should be created first what should be created next since then i started teaching like this only you will never see this kind of things in any youtubes if it go to any youtube any any kind of channels also you don't get this if at all you see he copied me <laughs> okay nice okay so is it clear till here now nice quickly guys here again can you tell me the order first vpc next internet gateway create the internet gateway and attach it to the vpc next third public subnet and then private subnet next nat gateway next routing tables so now here public subnet traffic is routed to internet gateway private subnet traffic is routed to nat gateway so and then uh, nat gateway should be in which subnet public subnet and also there are two types of routing tables what are those public routing table private routing table so public routing table traffic is routed to internet gateway which subnet is associated public subnet and private routing table which traffic is routed to nat and which subnet is associated super so now if someone asked you to set up vpc i'll write the steps based on what we have learned number first create vpc next step what is next step create internet gateway and attach it to the vpc super next create public and private subnets next create ha huh? create nat gateway very good nat gateway should be in which subnet public subnet see super correct you are on the way next create which routing table ah public rt and here all traffic is all traffic is routed to internet gateway and which subnet is associated public subnet is associated similarly sixth one create private rt and all traffic all traffic is routed to nat and which subnet na private subnet is associated is it clear so see here till now we are using default vpcs now we are creating our own vpc so when if you want to launch an ec2 instance in by launching the ec2 instance we select the default vpc no instead of that in the drop down we created our own vpc we need to select our new vpc and then also security group which type of security group we are using till now default security and i told you no more defaults so that meaning guys here if you want to launch an ec2 instance you need to select a security group no should we use default security group or should we create a new security group so the next step here is seventh step create security group Let's create a new security group and based on allow rdp and ssh based on if you want to windows or linux allow it is it clear and then what we do before this it's okay now see here guys you we all are in, in internet only no our laptops are in internet yes or no listen this from this is your laptop no uh, this is your laptop okay so from this laptop can you directly connect it to your public subnet yes or no yes because that is exposed to the internet you can connect it can you
can you connect it to the private subnet from your from here answer is no you had to be very strong yes or no no answer is no so but just in case if you want to connect to the private subnet from your internet how should we do guys what you need to do is you need to launch one ec2 instance in public subnet what is that you need to launch one ec2 instance in public subnet and that's the ec2 instance we call it as bastion or jump server what server bastion server or jump server bastion server or jump server so what you need to do is if you want to connect to the private so first log into bastion server and from here it will be connected to the private this is the architecture but the real time in real time how do we use this tell me in real time will you be connecting from internet or will you be working from company company right will you be in the internet just like that outside no so we should be working from the company see here guys let's assume this is a company company has public network or private network and we learned this already company has a private network and from private network so from company you have the private network and how do you connect from from your company to aws using using what huh vpn which one vpn remember from your company how do you connect to your aws vpn your network administrator might have set up the vpn connection from your company to aws already so if you are connecting to vpn that is public to private or private to private ah uh, so if you want to connect to the database servers private through vpn can you directly connect to the private database servers yes you can connect do you need to go for the bastion here like this no way if you are in the internet then only you have this option but from your company you need to connect through vpn can you directly connect to your database servers private ips yes nowadays you have so called uh, work from home yes or no where is it uh, this is home so if you are working from home so from you 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 have your company laptop you will be sitting in the inside the home first what you do you have your company vpn yes or no you will be having the company vpn so using that company vpn you will be connecting to your company using your company vpn you will be connected to the company this is company vpn guys using the company vpn you will be connected to the company network from your company network anyways you have access to aws yes you have access to aws correct so which is your actual real time scenario i'll say here i'll put it as here 1 2 and 3 which is your real time scenario it will be 1 next option 2 and in real time do you have 3 as we are learning as we don't have company that's why we go for 3 do you understood the architecture this is the real time okay i'll write it for you here the first is actual real time second one nana work from home third one learning purpose okay so now here till seventh point you have you created secret group and if you want to so now so what kind of lab we should do one or two or three or three we need to do so if you want to how many ec2 instance that you need to launch one in public subnet that is called what server bastion server and then another we launch in private subnet and then if you want to connect to the private subnet first you need to log into bastion server from bastion you need to log into private server that is the i am launching one ec2 instance can you launch multiple if required same when the tunnel is established you can launch many things so here i created a secret group what is the eighth what is the eighth one here ah excellent launch ec2 instance in which subnet 
uh, in launch is in a public subnet. What is that instance called? Bash and server. Okay. And another in private subnet. So, guys, if you to make sure our infra our architecture is perfectly working or not, we need to create this. And then what we need to do? Try connecting to bash. Uh, try connecting to private server through through bash and server. So if you did this, your architecture is done. VPC. Simple. Yes or no? For this, people will break the head. So how we did we learn simple? Because order is important. Order is important. Okay, now, so guys, now here, so we have two types of gateways. What are those? Internet gateway and then NAT gateway. This NAT gateway and internet gateway, both are services, not servers. Remember, those are services. I still remember, what does the NAT, NAT is used for what purpose? Yes. Uh -huh. First thing you should say something. NAT is used for what purpose? Provide internet access to private. This is the thing that you should answer. If anyone asks you, what is the purpose of now? What is NAT? What is NAT? Network address translator. It is used to provide internet access to the private subnet. They will, he will just keep quiet if you say this. Inter, interviewer will just shut up because he will understand that you know the topic. If you say it will convert to private, to public, so he will understand. So you don't know anything. So you need to say that. Okay. So now, I still remember NAT gateway is used for providing internet access. In our olden days, that means when I was architecting, there was no NAT gateway. NAT is nothing but a small software. NAT is nothing but a small software. That software I, I was installing on the EC2 instance. And that EC2 instance is called NAT instance. What instance? That was a software that I was installing on the instance and that is called NAT instance. So that NAT instance might be T2 small, T2 large something. If so many people in my private subnet starting access internet, that entire internet will go through NAT instance only, no? So that NAT instance, if you have only 4 GB or 8 GB, will that be sufficient? And they have internet access problems to your private subnet to your employees. For that reason, it is just in case. Right? So just in case, guys, just in case that NAT instance is down, stopped. Do you have internet access? Right? So is it better? After that, what AWS did was, Arivabu, instead of having a NAT instance, I am providing this, I will provide the service, the NAT gateway. So NAT gateway will go down. That is the service from AWS. It's not a server. So would you choose NAT instance or NAT gateway? Do you know what is NAT instance now? Yes. So here, NAT and Internet Gateway are services, not servers. And then NAT instance is outdated. Which one we should use? NAT Gateway. NAT Gateway is completely managed by AWS. You should know how to use it. Is it clear till here, everyone? Yes, Stalin. That there are different types of architectures are there. How the architecture has architected your environment based on that they can access. But actually, guys, uh, this is for experienced people. Generally, you will be connecting from your company to AWS. If AWS, if you are, if you are working to the client, these two things are there, guys. Let's say, let's assume this is what uh, we are working in a company called Boom Company. What company? Everything is which company? Boom Company, for example. 
you are which employees boom employees boom boom employees so this is a boom company this is a boom aws infrastructure so boom company people will be connecting to the boom database servers directly yes or no yes but this entire boom company will give the services to another customer right so customer has the infrastructure right as a boom company will you go and directly connect to the private servers and what they have jump server bastion server so stalin this is for you so if you are connecting to the customer side first you will be connecting to your bastion jump server then they will be you will be connecting to the private servers but if you are connecting to your own company you no need to have a jump server anymore okay so guys hope that is clear is it clear till here everyone okay now I, i'm asking this question listen this question carefully and answer it one customer came to you and asked babu i have private subnet i have ec2 instances in the private subnet and he said i don't want internet access to your to my private subnet what do you do hmm tell me so here we have two types of routing tables no do you see this is one routing table this is another routing table and this routing table is attached to which subnet public subnet this sub this attached to private subnet in public subnet what is 0.0.0.0/0 all traffic all traffic is routed to hey in public subnet all traffic is routed to internet gateway in private subnet all traffic is routed to nat gateway so my question here is for you is for a private subnet i don't need internet access what will you do so can i remove this entry nat entry or in routing table generally we add the routes so all all the traffic inside is is routing to the nat gateway how because a routing table is attached which routing table private routing table inside this i have a this route no all traffic is routed to the nat so simply if i remove this entry do i have internet access to the private that is one way or you can just completely delete the nat but is it good to delete the nat because in guys and by the way do i need to create only two subnets no so in our default vpc we use we till now we are using default vpc no in when we launching the ec2 instances how many subnets are there for default vpc how many are there how many are there when you are launching the ec2 instance you select a vpc and subnet you selected no how many subnets are there three are there no each subnet is associated to one available zone how many subnets are there think and answer think and answer all these three subnets are public subnets or private subnets think and answer which one by this i am certifying you you are aws engineers excellent because many of this this one because generally i i take this question and i can estimate you how much you have learned but thing is it's really good you answered it so all these three subnets are which subnets are public subnets so if you have launching the ec2 instance no in and then you are connecting to that ec2 instance no if you are not connecting that is a private subnet so as you are connecting to all the ec2 instances in one a you launch in one b you launch one c you might have launched you are connected to all the subnets so that means those subnets are public subnets so in default vpc do we have private subnet if you don't have private subnet do we have the nat for the default vpc do do we have the nat for the default vpc because there is no private subnet if there is no private subnet what is the use of nat do we have a nat in default vpc no you understood super so now the question here is for this private subnet he don't want internet access and simply you remove the nat entry 
or you remove the NAT gateway. But, but, he's asking, I want to access AWS services. What do you want to access? AWS services. Guys, AWS services can be accessed without internet. He want to access S3 from private subnet. To access S3, you need to have internet access. But if you need to have internet access, you need to enable NAT. But you don't want to have internet access, but you want to access, you want to have access only to AWS services. How do we do? You understood the question? He don't want to have internet access, but he want to access only AWS services. For this, AWS has a, another concept called VPC endpoints. What is that? VPC endpoints. Guys, using this VPC endpoints, it is used to access only AWS services without NAT. So you no need to have a NAT for this. So you create a VPC endpoints and attach it to your private subnet. And then let's say you want to access S3. You need to create what endpoint? S3 endpoint. You want to access RDS. You want to create RDS endpoint. So for each and every service, for S3, you create VPC endpoint. For DynamoDB, you want to access Dynamo, create a VPC endpoint. For each and every service, you need to create an endpoints if you want to access. But do we have internet access with VPC endpoints? No. The rest of the internet access you don't have. Only what access you have? Only AWS services access. That too, you create a VPC endpoint for S3, you have S3 access. That's how you create it. Is it clear, guys, everyone? So if you go with the NAT, NAT has full internet access. NAT has full internet access. Do you all understood what is VPC endpoints? <clears throat> okay. Is it clear till here, everyone? Clear, huh? Online, super, super. So now let me go to the, we have learned the theory. Let me go to the realistic now. So here we have a concept called CIDR. What is that? CIDR. You can call it as CIDR or you can call it as CIDR, not CINED. CIDR. What is that? Classless interdomain routing. What is the full form of CIDR? Classless interdomain routing. So guys, in this, uh, in this VPC in AWS, we know it to concentrate more on networking topics because everything is inbuilt. Everything is inbuilt. Routing, do you need to install router? No. So for, for many of the things, you know need to go deeper on the network topics, right? Here, everything is inbuilt. Okay, now, very important, see. First of all, we need to have a VPC, no? Yes or no? We need to have the VPC. So, for this VPC, we need to give the network range, no? While we need while creating the VPC, we need to give the network range. What is that? Network range. That meaning, when you launch the EC2 instance, you will get the IP address, no? How do you get the IP address? provided by AWS. But how does AWS know? Okay, by do you remember what is the private, uh, private IP of the EC2 instance start with? One, 172 series, correct? So how does, how does AWS is providing 172 series? Guys, because your VPC is created in 172 series. Your, the entire VPC is created in 172 series. So this VPC, you need to create, you need to create with a network range. And you ask, sir, who will provide this network range? Can I go and create one, two, three, four? No. Because eventually you create a VPC in AWS, but that from to that AWS VPC, from where you need to connect to that VPC? From your company. From your company. So your company network and AWS VPC network should be same or different? Same. If it is different, can you connect it? No. So this network range, whom you should ask? To your company network administrator, you need to ask. So company network administrator, he'll, he'll give like this. 
uh, 0.0/16. He'll give like this. Let us see what is this slash 16 and all. So guys, 192.168.00, we call it as base IP. What we call? And slash 16, we call it as subnet mask. What we call? Subnet mask. Do you remember we, we learned this in uh, NS in EC2? We create a VPC and inside the VPC, what we create? What we create? Subnets we create. VPC is like a big room. I mean, big hall or a big house. Inside that, can you create your own compartments? That own compartments, nothing but here, subnets. <coughs> so now, you can go with either 192 series or you can go with the AWS is giving 172 series. You created a VPC, AWS has a default VPC. No, that default VPC is created with what series? 172 series. That's why you're getting 172 IP addresses. If you created VPC with 192 series, you will get the private IP with 192. Okay, now let's say, how many subnets should I go and create? Should I create three? Can you create more also? It's up to you. So how many subnets I can create? Three subnets. Can you create more subnets also? Yes. Guys, listen this carefully. And my CIDR, what is the network range for my first one here is one subnet, 192, 168. You have zero, zero, no? Instead of zero, put 1.0 slash 24. Slash 24, I'll tell you what is that. And then another subnet, tell me, 192, 168. Ah, 2.0 slash 24. And next, 192, 168, 3.0 slash 24. Like this, 4.0, 5.0, 6.0, you can create multiple subnets. No, no. Now you created a subnet, no? Can I call this first subnet as public subnet? Now question is, how do we call, how do I, how do I say this is public subnet? Because can I route this subnet to internet gateway? If I if I'm routing, I told you public subnet is routed to internet gateway. So any subnet you are routing to the internet gateway, that subnet is called what subnet? Public subnet. This subnet I'm routing it to the NAT, and this is called what subnet? Excellent. Okay. So this subnet I'm routing it to. VPC endpoint. Can I route it to VPC endpoint? Uh, what subnet is this? Private subnet. Can I create multiple subnets like this? Yes. And each subnet is associated to one availability zone. I put it in 1A. This one, and this one. If I another subnet, that subnet should be in 1A. Very good, 1A. You're getting it? How are we categorizing it? Okay, now. So, anyone working in, inside the company, guys, anyone real time people, in your company, in your company, your IP address will start with what? 192, 10 series, 172 series, only these three. In your real time, you are, these are all used for private purpose. Which series, Nana? 192 series, 10 series, 172 series. Most 99.99999% your companies will go with this three series only. Rest are all public. Rest are all used for public IPs. Yes, you can put one A also, no issues. Guys, one subnet can be associated to multiple availability zones at the same time. One subnet can be into multiple available at the same time. No, we learned, right? One subnet is, should be in one availability zone at the, at the same time. One availability zone can have multiple subnets. Yes, one availability zone can have multiple subnets. Okay, see now, <clears throat> now 
guys you go and launch the ec2 instance where in this subnets only no you will go and launching the ec2 instance inside this subnets okay now let me come to what is slash 24 what is slash 24 subnet mask what is that that subnet mask will decide how many ip addresses you will get it in that subnet that subnet mask refers to how many ips that you get inside the subnet let me give an example guys please remember one formula i'll say 2 power 32 minus n what is the 2 power 32 minus n and if you want to know how many ip addresses that you get if you use slash 24 should we calculate it now 2 power 32 minus how much you put 24 what is 2 power 32 minus 24 8 what is 2 power 8 how much 256 so how many ip addresses you will get inside that subnet 256 ips you will get so indirectly how many ec2 instances you can launch 256 ec2 instance you can launch in one subnet but remember you need to remove five ip addresses how many you need to remove because in each and every subnet if you remove five how much you will get uh, two power i mean two fifty one you will get it so guys every subnet has five e five ips reserved what ips five ips are reserved for each subnet how many ips are reserved five ips are reserved and those are dot zero you cannot assign dot one you cannot assign dot two you cannot assign dot three you cannot assign and dot 255 you cannot assign so how many ips are there here five ips you cannot those are reserved you cannot assign guys in each and that's why you have to remove five dot zero is used for network related dot one is used for a routing purpose your router dot two for dns dot three for future purpose and dot 255 for broadcasting Three and dot two fifty five. Okay, now guys, see here. I put slash twenty, uh, slash twenty four. Can I put slash twenty also? Can you find out how much we'll get? Two power thirty two minus twenty. How much two power? Uh, how much is two power twelve? I have four zero nine six. Inside this, how many I need to remove? Five. That means how much? Four zero nine one you will get it so if you put slash 20 how many ipss you will get uh, in one subnet 4091 ips you will get so will you waste the ip address will you waste the ip addresses don't waste it so that reason while creating the subnet you need to be very careful what type of subnet mask you need to give either you want to give slash 24 if you go slash 24 how many you will get 251 ip so if you need more go for slash 20 okay now what is slash 16 should i go with slash 16 uh, tell me 2 power 32 minus 16 how much 2 power 16 how much 2 power 16 it is 65536 minus 5 how much 65531 so guys this much so that is the as this is the bigger one for that reason for vpc they have given slash 16 so if you if you go for slash 16 that means you will get such a big network and big ip addresses you will get that so see here guys in security group you select my ip you know if you select my ip you will get the ip address slash 32 do you do you did you observe you get slash 32 slash 32 meaning what tell me this 2 power 32 where is that 2 power 32 minus 32 how much 2 power 0 2 power 0 meaning 
2 power 0 meaning 1. That meaning slash 32 meaning only you are a single IP. You understood now, everyone? Do you remember the steps how to create a VPC? Now we have the subnet. Guys, what is our VPC cider that we are going to create? What is the VPC cider that we're going to create here? 192.168.0.0.16. Which one? 192.168.0.0 slash 16. Here. What is the VPC that we create? We create the VPC with the cider call 192.168.0.0.16. And we create subnet, no? We create two subnets we'll create. What is the subnet cider? 192.168.1.0 slash 24. That is one subnet. What is another subnet? 192.168.2.0 slash 24, another subnet. Okay, now let's write those. What is the first step? Create VPC. Uh, what is the cider? 192.168.0.0 slash 16. What is the next step after creating VPC? Mm -hmm. What is the next step after creating VPC? Internet gateway, no. Create internet gateway and attach it to the VPC. Uh, what is the next step? Create public subnet. Uh, what is the public subnet? Uh, CIDR. 192.168.1.0 uh, slash 24. Next. Create private subnet. What is the CIDR? 192.168.2.0 slash 24. Uh, what is the next step? Mm. After public private subnets, what do we need to create? NAD. Create NAD gateway. And this NAD gateway should be in which subnet? Public subnet. Guys, for this NAD gateway, we need to provide one elastic IP because that we need to have. Uh, what is the next step after creating NAT? Creating which routing table? Public routing table. And all traffic is routed to internet gateway. And which subnet? Public subnet is associated. What is the next step? Create private routing table. All traffic is routed to which subnet? Private subnet. After that, create a new security group. Create a new security group. Allow RDP and SSH. Next, launch EC2 instance in public subnet. What is that called? Yes, Baston server. And another in private subnet. And then 10th one, connect to private, connect to Baston first and then to private server. Do you all understood? Bloody VPC. Clear up. Tell me honestly, easy or not? Riyas are students only will say VPC is easy. Because this, we need to go order and step by step. Clear enough? Any questions still here? No questions? Completely understood, huh? Super. So, I'm pakka telling you tomorrow what we do is we'll, we'll, whatever we have written here, we'll set up with the same process and you will be creating, setting up the VPC like this only within few seconds, you will say, you will, within few minutes, you can create the VPC. Super. Take the screenshots. And also there is one topic pending. Two VPCs can talk to each other by default. No. If required, yes. So we can make the two VPCs can talk to each other using the concept called VPC peering. 
what is that called vpc peering so we will talk about vpc peering tomorrow and practicals on the vpc also you are expecting something else tell me okay very good take the screenshot so in vpc also okay let's take the screen so we'll talk tomorrow good can you give the final cc for today please great so that is all guys for today and i'll see you tomorrow with vpc practicals and then take care bye bye have a nice day and see you tomorrow good night